I want to talk to you today about is psychology Christian? Okay, we don't have as much of an outright rejection of psychology now as we did say back in the 1970s and 80s when psychology was just coming more into the norm, normal conversation. There were so many help, you know, self-help books were coming out. They were just beginning to come out with the understanding of the family being dysfunctional and it affecting more people than, you know, just the people that had like mental illness. So it's not as common as it used to be, but there are still people that are not comfortable with counselors, with psychologists, with therapists, with going to therapy, uh, with going to counseling with anybody but a biblical counselor. And I kind of just want to hash through that with you. So what does psychology mean? Psychology literally means study of the mind or psyche. Okay, so right there you can see, hmm, study of the mind. What's the difference between study of the mind or study of the body? Right? Okay. Did God create the mind? Did God create the body? Yes. Yes. So there are people that study the body, right? There are people that study the mind. There are people that heal the body, fix the body, doctors, physicians, and there are people that work with healing the mind, right? Counselors, therapists, psychologists. All right. So what are some of the arguments against this rejection of therapy or psychology? First one, psychology is the study of the mind. God created the mind. God created the body. What's the difference? I just kind of explained that to you. There is no difference. The next one, the mind directs human behavior. Is scripture not all about human behavior, about choices that we make and how we act and how we are supposed to choose how we act, right? So if psychology is the study of human behavior and we can get insights into behavior, how to change behavior, what is wrong with that? Our human nature affects our relationships. So our behavior affects our relationships big time, right? You, can, you, those of you who are in difficult relationships, as I have been, know that a person's inability to deal with their mind and their moods and their emotions and their thoughts and their beliefs can literally wreck a relationship. Where do you think all, the, all this divorce comes from in the church? So absolutely, human nature affects our relationships. Our minds, our thoughts affect our relationships. We have to take care of those things. Better to go to a therapist and work on them than it is to get a divorce, right? Than it is to harm children and cause your kids to be raised in a dysfunctional home. Our emotions affect our actions. We need to deal with them. Absolutely. Emotions that get pushed underneath and not dealt with spew out. They are make us overreact to things. They make us angry. They make us blame other people on thing, for things that are our responsibility. So uh, emotions have to be dealt with. One of the ways we deal with them is to understand them. Where do they come from? How does the past affect our future? And how does it affect our now? And God can use all kinds of things to heal us, just like God can miraculously heal our bodies, or he can use a doctor, or he can use medicine, or he can use, you know, something natural that we do, or the way that we eat, all kinds of things. Same thing with our mind. All kinds of things can help us come to a place of peace or healing with our mind. And in fact, oh my gosh, now the whole like emphasis, I can tell you in the field of psychology, therapy is understanding trauma and how trauma is affects us. Still, it stays in our body. Uh, I'm doing somatic therapy right now to help me with trauma that's kind of locked in my body and just keeps me really tense and kind of charged and, and uh, on all the time and getting to that place of just being able to be calm in, in, a, in my you know, inner being from knowing that I'm safe and okay based on all the childhood problems that I've gone through and marital problems. Uh, it helps. It's nothing weird. It literally just works with the body the way God created our bodies. So when we look at trauma, trauma is locked in our memory, in our brains. Trauma affects the way we react. Trauma affects the way we overreact. Trauma affects our health. Trauma, especially chronic trauma, we might think that's not trauma, but this just continual trauma of being in difficult relationships 
has an effect on us. Trauma, like PTSD, has a relationship, uh, has an effect on our relationships and our body and our physical health. So absolutely, we need to deal with emotions. We need to deal with ev- our mind. So I think I've hopefully given you kind of a good defense of that. Now, what do you do when, how does counseling work? So a lot of the healing and counseling comes just from having a person who is there that can listen to you and validate what you're saying and allow you to process it. And as you're processing and somebody's listening and they're giving you validation, sometimes just that brings healing. The other thing is that there are certain techniques, types of therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy. I just mentioned somatic experiencing therapy, which is a trauma-based body therapy. Uh, there's uh, EMDR, there, which also works with the mind and trauma. There are all kinds of different types of other types of therapy that are specific techniques. Um, Christian therapists and non-Christian therapists use the same techniques. The techniques are what helps you heal in the sense that they're a way of looking at thoughts and beliefs, a look, way of changing beliefs, a way with, of dealing with past problems, or whether you're a, a couple going to marital counseling and you use a what's called um, different types of uh, emotional, like looking at your emotions EFT, emotional, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, it's just not coming to me. <laughs> so emotional focusing therapy, yeah, EFT. And also then there's um, looking at your, how you are attachment theory, how you're attaching. That's another way of looking at couples therapy. So these are just techniques. They're ways of analyzing your actions, your reactions, your feelings, your beliefs, and working within them and helping you come to a place of either better understanding them or making adjustments in them. Non-Christian therapists, Christian therapists use the same. A lot of Christian therapists don't even bring up anything about your Christianity unless you bring up a conflict that you have with something in that particular area. And if that's the case, maybe go to your pastor or someone in your church where you can talk to about the scriptural misunderstanding you have, because a lot of people don't have access to Christian therapists because they have an insurance plan where they have a limited number and you don't know if somebody's a Christian, uh, you can call and ask any th- a therapist, a potential therapist, any questions you have. Sometimes they don't answer you because they don't want to give you personal information to keep the relationship very uh, therapeutic, client therapist. And uh, so you can try. If you can get a Christian therapist, great, because you'll feel more comfortable. And if you do have questions about your faith, that can be brought in. But if you can't, then you can go to a non-Christian therapist and still get help and feel comfortable. And if there would perchance, unlikely, but if perchance there was something weird or some weird philosophy that you were not comfortable with, you just either ask the therapist not to do that or you go to a different therapist. And again, it's very rare that you would find a therapist who would bring anything in that you would be uncomfortable with because they don't bring in personal stuff. So... Uh, like I said, psychology gives you great insights into human behavior, into the mind. Therapy can be super helpful. I'm just going to give you a couple scriptures to reflect on as this, uh, as we talked about this. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, The purposes of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. That's what a therapist does. A therapist draws out information from your past, from your present, from your emotions, from your thoughts, draws that out, helps you process it, helps you make adjustments, which brings you healing within yourself and in your relationships. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. So in other words, if you lack wisdom, you ask God, what is one of the ways that God provides wisdom? Through other people. Proverbs has many scriptures where it says that you get advice from many advisors before undertaking plans to do something, or that a man gets counsel to guide him. And that's all you're doing with the counselor. So I hope that this has helped you uh, kind of solidify and clarify 
what counseling does and what you need to look for in a counselor. Like I said, you can ask any questions you need to about their type of counseling, their philosophy about counseling, and kind of get an, an idea of that person's way of doing that. And then you can look it up and see what you think. There's a lot of effective ways of counseling. So uh, it, it can be a really great thing in your life for your kids and definitely worth trying before you would break up a relationship. So, okay, thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship. I hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll watch more. And also, if you want to get a, kind of a, I send out a free devotional every about eight days. You can sign up for that for free. And then at the same time, that'll give you a notice that I'm putting out a new YouTube video and uh, you can get a link to that and go right to it. So if you want my free devotionals, you can uh, click a link here at the end and also, or you can go to my website and sign up directly. So thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship.